I have a few more points I want to submit to the authorities of Afyon and to its court and police. The first, most of the prophets appearing in the East and in Africa and most of the philosophers emerging in the West and in Europe is a sign of pre-eternal divine determining that in Asia religion is dominant and philosophy is in second place. In consequence, even if those ruling in Asia are not religious, they should not interfere with those who work for religion, they should encourage them. The second, the all-wise Quran is the intellect and power of thoughts of the head of the earth. If I seek refuge with God, the Quran were to depart from the globe, the globe would go mad. It is not far from reason to suppose that another planet colliding with its head, emptied of reason, would cause doomsday to erupt. Yes, the Quran is a chain, a rope of God, binding the earth to the divine throne. It preserves the earth more than gravity. Thus, the Risale Nur, which is a true and powerful commentary on the Quran of mighty stature, is a supreme divine bounty which has been demonstrating its effectiveness for 20 years in the century and insuppressible miracle of the Quran. The government therefore should not be interfering in it and trying to scare its students away from it, but protecting it and encouraging people to read it. The third. In Denis the court, I said the following in connection with all the believers assisting with prayers for forgiveness, those who have departed for the past and their bequeathing good works on their spirits. When you are asked by millions of believing plaintiffs at the Supreme Tribunal, why did you want to ruin with imprisonment and persecution the Risalinur students who were striving to save the country and nation from anarchy and irreligion and immortality and their compatriots from eternal annihilation, although because of the liberty laws you looked tolerantly on the publications of atheists and communists and political societies that produce anarchists and did not bother them. What answer will you and those who want to convict and ruin the Risalinur students who serve the truths of the Quran give? I am asking you the same thing. I said that to them and those just and fair-minded people acquitted us, demonstrating the fairness of the judicial system. The fourth, I was expecting to be taken for interrogation to a place of consultation in either Ankara or Afyon, where questions would be asked and answered about matters of overriding importance and their Salinur's relation to them. Yes, matters connected with finding ways of restoring the brotherhood, love, and good will of 350 million Muslims for this nation and country and their moral assistance for it. An indication that the Risale Nur is the most effective means of achieving this is the following. In Mecca this year, a scholar of great eminence translated the main collections of the Risale Nur into both one of the Indian languages and Arabic and sending them to India and Arabia said. Just as he strives through the Risale Nur to secure unity and Islamic brotherhood, our most powerful support, so he demonstrates that the Turkish nation is always progressive in religion and belief. I was also expecting that momentous questions would be asked like, what is the extent of the service the Risale Nur can provide in the face of the danger communism poses to this country because it turns into anarchy? How can this blessed country be defended against this terrible torment? It should have been thus, but having been blown up out of all proportion due to the petty and personal slander of the spiteful, matters holding not the slightest importance and which are in no way crimes were discussed, which caused me distress in these serious conditions, the like of which I have never before suffered in my life. Meaningless questions were asked about one or two minor personal matters which three previous courts had previously examined, then acquitted. The fifth, the Risale Nur cannot be contested or defeated. It has been silencing the most upright philosophers for 20 years. 
It demonstrates the truth of belief as clearly as the sun. The rulers of this country should profit from its strength. The sixth, destroying my unimportant character because of my personal faults and through contemptuous treatments poisoning public opinion about me does not harm the Salinur. In fact, it strengthens it in some ways. For in place of my mortal tongue are the undying tongues of a hundred thousand copies of the Salinur, and they cannot be silenced. They will speak out. And as they have up to now, the thousands of powerful tongues of its sincere students will continue that sacred universal service till the end of the world, God willing. The seventh. As I stated in the previous trials, putting forward the proofs, our enemies and those who oppose us, both officially and unofficially, deceiving the government, making some of its leading members suspicious about us, and causing the judiciary to move against us, are either seriously deceived or have been deceived by others, or are exceeding the treacherous revolutionaries working on account of anarchy or cunning atheists struggling against Islam and the truths of the Quran on account of apostasy. Calling absolute despotism the Republic in order to attack us and making the regime a screen to absolute apostasy and calling absolute dissipation, civilization and calling arbitrary compulsion on account of disbelief, the law, they have both ruined us and deceived the governments and preoccupied the judiciary with us for no reason. Referring them to the wrath of the all-compelling and glorious one, we take refuge in the steady of, for us God suffices, and he is the best disposer of affairs, so as to defend ourselves against their evil. The eighth, last year the Russians sent numerous people to make the Hajj as propaganda in order to show that they are more respectful towards the Quran than other nations and because of religion to try to turn the Islamic world against the religious people of this country. But the main collections of the Risalinur were being spread at that time in both Mecca and Medina and Damascus and Egypt and Aleppo, attracting the appreciation of the religious scholars which both negated the communist propaganda and showed to the Islamic world that like formerly the Turkish nation and its brothers are supporting religion and the Quran and are the elder brothers of the other peoples of Islam and their heroic commander in the service of the Quran. Those collections from the Risale Nur demonstrated this in those sacred centers. Will it not bring the earth to anger? If this valuable national service of the Salinur is responded to with torments in this way, the ninth is a brief summary of a matter that was proved and elucidated in my defense in Denizli. If through his genius and intelligence a great military commander arrogates to himself all the positive virtues of the army and ascribes to the army his own negative evils, the courageous actions and virtues of the soldiers which equal them in number will be reduced to one, while the commander's evils will be equal in number to the soldiers, which is an awesome wrong and contrary to the truth. This being so, I said to the public prosecutor in our previous trials, who was attacking me because of the slap a hadith I expounded 40 years earlier dealt that person, it's true, I am offending him due to predictions made by hadith, but I am also defending the army's honor and preserving him from serious error. As for you, for the sake of one single friend of yours, you are affronting the honor of the army which is the Quran's standard bearer and an heroic commander of the Islamic world. God willing, the prosecutor saw the matter more fairly and was saved from his error. The tenth. It is because in the administration of justice, the essence of justice and the rights of everyone who applies have to preserve without discrimination and the duty of those involved is to work solely for the sake of right that during his caliphate, Imam Ali, may God be pleased with him, sat together with a Jew in court and they were tried together. On another occasion, a just judge saw that an official was angry with a delinquent thief 
when he was cutting off his hand as demanded by the law. He immediately sacked the official and full of regret said, Officials who up to now have been influenced by their feelings in this way while executing the law have perpetrated great wrongs. Yes, even if in executing the law he does not pity the convicted man, he should not be angry. If he is, he is acting tyrannically. If he carries out capital punishment angrily, even if it is in retaliation, he becomes a sort of murderer. Thus, in courts of law, it is this pure, unbiased truth which rules. But, although three courts have acquitted us, and perhaps if they knew, 90% of this nation would testify that their Salinur students are harmless and beneficial for nation and country, the students are being angrily and contemptuously mistreated, despite being innocent and much in need of consolation and the indulgence of the law. But, since we have decided to meet every calamity and insult with patience and forbearance, we are silent, referring it to God and saying, Perhaps there is some good in this. However, I was afraid that these innocent unfortunates being treated in this way due to unfounded suspicions and the malicious reports of informers would lead to the visitation of disaster and I was therefore obliged to write this. Anyway, if there is any fault in this matter, it is mine. These unfortunates assisted me solely seeking God's pleasure and to save their religious belief and lives in the hereafter. For them to receive such treatment when they were deserving of praise and appreciation is enough to make anyone angry. Moreover, it is amazing, but again they are making unsupported assertions about a political society. However, both three courts have scrutinized this aspect of the case and acquitted us, and neither the courts nor the police nor the experts' committees have discovered any sign of any society that could justify such an accusation. The Risalinur students are a brotherhood which looks to the hereafter like the students of a teacher or university students or the students of a Quran teacher who is teaching them to memorize the Quran. Those who have made charges against them, calling them a political society, have to look on all tradesmen, preachers, and school children as belonging to such societies. I therefore see no necessity to defend those imprisoned here as a result of such meaningless and baseless charges. However, there is nothing at all to prevent me defending the Salinur with the same facts that I have defended it with three times previously, for it closely concerns both this country and the Islamic world, and it is the beneficial cause of plenty and blessings, material and spiritual, for this nation and country. No law or politics prohibits this or could prohibit it. Yes, we are a society, but we a society which every century has 350 million members. Every day, with the obligatory prayers, its members demonstrate five times with perfect veneration their attachment to the principles of that sacred society and their wish to serve it. In accordance with the sacred program of, indeed, the believers are brothers. They hasten with their supplications and spiritual gains to assist one another. Yes, we are members of that holy and vast society, and our particular duty is to convey in confirmatory form to the people of belief the Quranic truths of faith and save them and ourselves from eternal annihilation and perpetual solitary confinement in the intermediate realm. We have absolutely no connection with any worldly, political, plotting society, political or revolutionary as has been imputed to us. We do not consent to any such meaningless, purposeless secret society. In any event, four courts of law have investigated this down to the finest details and then acquitted us concerning it. Yes, the Risalinur students know and I have pointed out proofs of it in the courts that not to gain for myself any position or fame and win spiritual rank and a high rank in the hereafter, but 
in order to serve the believers with all my conviction and strength in the question of belief, I am ready to sacrifice not only my life in this world and its transcendent wrecks, but, if necessary, my life in the hereafter and its everlasting wrecks, which everyone seeks, and even in order to be a means of saving certain unfortunates from hell, if necessary, to forego paradise and myself go to hell. Just as my true brothers know this, so I have proved it in some respects in the courts. Accusing me in this way of insincerity in my service of the Risale Nur and belief, and depreciating the Risale Nur and devaluing it will deprive this nation of its sublime truth. If, because they imagine this world is eternal and that like themselves everyone exploits religion and belief for the world, these wretches ascribe worldly motives to someone who challenges all the people of misguidance in this world, is ready to sacrifice his lives both in this world and if necessary in the next, and as he claimed in the courts, would not exchange a single truth of belief for rule of the whole world, and out of sincerity and its mystery flees with all his strength from politics and all ranks, material and spiritual, which hint of politics and has endured unequaled torments for twenty years, and due to his way, has not condescended to any involvement in politics, and with respect to himself considers himself far inferior to his students, and believes himself to be truly wretched and unimportant, if because of the extraordinary strength of belief they have obtained from the Salinur, some of his sincere brothers ascribe to him in their private letters some of the virtues of the Salinur because he is their interpreter and in consequence of a custom which has absolutely no political overtones, they afford him a high rank, like people call ordinary persons they love, my lord, my benefactor, and they think much better of him than he deserves, and follow the old, acceptable custom practiced between master and students, which is not objected to and has the meaning of thanks, and praise him excessively, and write exaggerated eulogies, which has long been the custom to write at the ends of acceptable books. If they do these things, can it any way be considered a crime? For sure it is opposed to the truth in a way, since it is aggregation, but he is a stranger, alone, with numerous enemies, and there are numerous things to make him lose his helpers. So, purely in order to strengthen their moral in the face of so many opponents, and to prevent them fleeing, and not to destroy the enthusiasm of those who praised him excessively, he changed part of what they had written, so that it referred to the Salinur and did not reject it outright. It may be understood, therefore, just how far from the truth, the law and fair-mindedness certain officials have fallen when they try to make the above person's service of belief look to this world, despite his age and his being at the door of the grave. My last word is, and for every calamity we belong to God, and to him is our return. In his name be he glorified. I say this to Afyon court and the chief criminal judge, because since my early youth I could not endure to be dominated, I severed my relations with the world. Now. Life has become a great burden for me with this meaningless, unnecessary oppression. I do not have the power to endure the persecution of thousands of officials outside. I am fed up with this sort of life. With all my strength, I am requesting you to sentence me. To enter the grave is not within my power and I have to remain in prison. You too know that the unsubstantiated crimes the persecution accuses me of are non-existent. I cannot be convicted because of them. However, I have serious faults before my true duties, for which I can in effect be convicted. If it is appropriate to ask, I shall reply to your question. Yes, my only crime out of my serious faults is this. It occurred to me here in Afyon prison that in the view of reality, it was an unforgivable fault that, because I had not looked to the world, 
I had not performed the weighty duty with which I had been charged in the name of the country, nation, and religion, and my not knowing this did not excuse me. The fact that three courts have acquitted us in this respect shows just how far from truth and justice those have fallen who give the name of a worldly political society to their Salinor students, disinterested attachment to their Salinor and its interpreter, which looks purely to the hereafter and try to show that they are guilty of a criminal office. We too say, the basis and foundation of human society and particularly the Islamic nation are the sincere bonds between relatives and the concerned attachment between tribes and groups and due to Islamic nationhood, the spiritual brotherhood and mutual assistance between believers and the devotion to one's nation and unshakable attachment to and partiality for the truths of the Quran and those who propagate them. It is only by denying these bonds which ensure the life of society and by accepting the red peril which scatters the terrible seed of anarchy from the north which ruins the younger generation and nationhood and drawing to itself everyone's children destroys kinship and nationhood and opens up the way to the complete corruption of human civilization and the life of society that the Risalinur students can be called a political society which is an indictable offense. For this reason, true students of the Risalinur proclaim openly their separate attachment to the truths of the Quran and their unshakable bonds of brotherhood which look to the hereafter. Because they are happy to accept any penalty they may receive because of that brotherhood, they admit in your just court the truth as it is. They do not stoop to defend themselves with lies, scoffancy, and cunning. An addendum to the addition to my written objections to the indictments presented to Afyon court. Firstly, I tell the court that since the new indictment is based on the old indictments of Denizli and Eskshire courts and on the superficial investigations of the superficial committees of experts who were opposed to us, I claim in your court that if I cannot prove 100 errors in this indictment, I shall be happy with a 100 year sentence. Now I have proved my case. If you wish, I can present you with a table of more than a hundred errors. Secondly, when during the Denizli trial, our books and papers had been sent to Ankara and I was full of anxiety and despair that the judgment would be given against us, I wrote to my friends the following piece, which has been added to the end of some of my defense speeches. If the officers of the law who are studying the Risalinur with the idea of criticizing it, strengthening or save their belief through it, bear witness that I forgive them, for we are here to serve. The Salinur's function is to strengthen and save belief. We are charged with serving belief without differentiating between friend and foe and without taking sides. Judges of the court, in consequence of this truth, the powerful, irrefutable proofs of the Salinur have directed the hearts of the people of the court towards itself. Whatever you do against me, I forgive you, I will harbor no grudge. It is because of this that although I have been right by the extreme tyranny and repression I have suffered and the contemptuous treatment and defamation of my person, which have been to an extent I have never previously experienced, I have endured it and have not even spoken ill of those involved. The collections of the Risalinur, which you have in your possession, form my irrefutable, incontestable defense and my objections to all the charges made against us and the crimes of which we are accused. It is astonishing that, although the leading scholars of Cairo, Damascus, Aleppo, Medina and Mecca and the exacting scholars of the Directorate of Religious Affairs have studied the Risalinur collections minutely and offering no criticisms, have praised and applauded them, the clever persons who compiled the indictment against us showed through an extraordinary and obvious error, stating that the Quran contains 40 surahs, just how superficially they considered the matter. Despite hundreds of thousands of the people of reality affirming the Risalinur, 
under the severe conditions and myself in exile, alone and wretched and the object of fearsome attacks that persecutor who does not even know how many surahs there are in the Quran said. Although the Risale Nur attempts to expound the Quran and interpret Hadith, it has no scholarly substance or value in teaching its readers in a part of it. It is understood just how far his criticisms are from the law, reality, justice and equity. I also make this complaint to you that although for two hours you made us listen to the entire 40 page indictment which contains hundreds of errors and wounds our hearts, despite my insistence you did not allow me two minutes to read one and a half pages in reply which were the complete truth. In the name of justice, I therefore request that you permit me to read my entire list of objections. Thirdly, every government has opponents, but so long as they do not disturb public order, they may not be touched legally. Is it at all possible then that myself and those like me who are disenchanted with the world and work only for the grave should give up spending the remainder of their lives within the bonds taught by the Quran? on the way our forefathers followed for 1350 years in a way permitted by the rules sanctified at all times by 350 million believers that we should give up that way and being cursed by our enemies and their subterfuges merely for this brief and fleeting world life support the savage laws and principles of an immoral dissolute civilization indeed of a sort of communism and adopt them as our way. No law anywhere and no one the tiniest bit fair would force us to accept them. We only say to those who oppose us, don't bother us and we won't bother you. It is due to this fact that I support neither intellectually nor on scholarly grounds the arbitrary commands of a commander called laws which have made Hagia Sophia into a house of idols and the Sheikh al-Islam's office into a girl's high school. And for myself, I do not act in accordance with them. But although for 20 years I have been severely oppressed during my torturous captivity, I have not become involved in politics, nor provoked the authorities, nor disturbed public order. Although I have hundreds of thousands of Risale Nur friends, not a single incident has been recorded involving the disturbance of the peace. I am fed up with life due to the utterly humiliating and unjust treatment directed at my person here in my exile in the last period of my life such as I have never before suffered and which has galled me. I feel disgust at freedom even under this oppression. I have written you a petition saying that contrary to everyone else, I want not my acquittal but to be convicted and given not a light sentence, I want the heaviest penalty. For in order to be saved from this unparalleled, extraordinarily tyrannical treatment, there is no solution for me other than entering either the grave or prison. But since suicide is not permitted and the appointed hour of death is unknown and outside my power, I am resigned to the imprisonment I now suffer in absolute solitary confinement. Note, the same situation has now continued for 17 months. However, I am not presenting this petition for the present for the sake of my innocent companions. Fourthly, confirmed by all that I have written in the Risale Nur, these 30 years of my life, the period I have called that of the new site and the facts concerning my person and testified to by the fair-minded people and friends who have met with me with serious intention, I state this. As far as I have been able, I have tried to restrain my evil commanding soul from indulging in self-advertisement, fame-seeking and pride, and perhaps a hundred times I have wounded the feelings of the Risalinur students who have excessively good opinions of me. As is confirmed by both my close friends and my brothers, and the signs they have observed, I told them. I possess nothing, I am the wretched herald of the jeweler's shop of the Quran. Let alone winning world rank for myself 
and high position and fame, even supposing I was given high spiritual rank, being frightened of the possibility of my soul taking a share in the service I perform and spoiling my sincerity and pure intention, I decided to sacrifice those ranks and positions for my service. Yet, despite my acting in this way and my not accepting the gratitude of some of my brothers for their benefiting from the Risale Nur, which has been presented in your high court as though it were some political matter of great moment, you have made their respect for me, which is greater than that of a son for his father, the subject of interrogation. You have driven some of them to deny it. You have made us listen in astonishment. Can it be imagined a crime for some unfortunate to be praised, although he himself is not happy at this and does not consider himself worthy? Fifthly, I tell you certainly that to accuse the Risalinur students of belonging to a political society and of political involvement when they have absolutely no connection with any society, association or political movement is knowingly or unknowingly to struggle against us on account of a secret atheistic organization which for 40 years has been working directly against Islam and belief or in the name of a sort of communism which produces anarchy in this country. For three courts of law have acquitted in that respect all the Risale Nur students and the treatises of the Risale Nur. Only as chair court gave me one year and out of 120 others, 15 of my friends, six months each because of a single matter in a short treatise about the waiting of women or perhaps because of the sentence. According to what I have heard, in the center of government, a shoe shiner behaved impudently towards the semi-naked wife of an important person and his astonishing unmannerliness dealt a slap in the shameless face of someone opposed to the wailing of women, which was reading long ago. That means to accuse the Risaleh Nur and its students now is to charge and convict three courts and to be contemptuous of them. Sixthly, the Risale Nur cannot be combated. All the Islamic scholars who have seen it have confirmed that it is a veracious commentary on the Quran, that is, it consists of powerful proofs of its truths. It's a miracle of the Quran this century and a firm barrier for this nation and country against the perils from the north. I have understood, therefore, that it is a duty of your court not to scare off its students but with regard to public rights, to encourage them, and I await this from you. Thanks to freedom of scholarship, the books and journals of the irreligious and some political atheists who are harmful for the nation, country, and public security are not interfered with, so it surely is not a crime to be a student of the Risale Nur and save the belief of the innocent, needy youth, and preserve them from immorality Indeed, the government and minister of education should applaud and encourage it. My last word, may Almighty God allow the judges to execute the law with true justice. Amen. For us, God suffices and he is the best disposer of affairs, the best of lords and the best of helpers. All praise be to God, the sustainer of all the worlds.